Happy Shabbat Shalom. Happy Purim. Correct? Shushan Purim. Shushan Purim. I love Regular it. Regular Purim was yesterday on the 14th. Okay. As you can see, we have, I don't know what's on the screen, but I hope you can see um, our email address, it's high and tibble, and the email, not email, the uh, webpage, webpage it's yeah. high -M healing com, and text to donate, yeah. 833-432-0653, for your convenience, you can simply text that number, and you'll be prompted on the first time with a few prompts of uh, put your credit card or your debit card information in and you can uh, type in the amount on your, you know from your phone that you would like to you know make for a one-time donation or a reoccurring donation every month and even if you do a reoccurring donation if any time you'd like to give uh, a separate extra donation of any kind whenever you can always uh do that and that's 24 hours you know 24 7 365 mm -hmm. anytime anywhere okay well i guess uh they can see that and leslie will um flash that to you uh, at various times during the uh, teaching today and I'm going to talk a little bit more a little more about that it, it's it's funny how God works and it's not funny but he, he, he's so good he's Amen. so good well for those of you who don't know I'm Rabbi Vincent P. Adams and I'm co-founder of Etzayim Temple and Energy Center, along with my lovely wife, Navia Leslie Adams. And I just want to say Shabbat Shalom, Hag Shemayak, because it is Sushan Purim today, the 15th of Adar, of one Adar, because we have two Adars this year. We have, we're in leap year on the biblical uh, calendar. And very powerful, very, very powerful time today. If you uh, saw my post yesterday, I, I told people to uh, do spiritual warfare today, mm -hmm. do confessions. You're going to win. Now, it, it's, it's laid out for you. This is the time to engage in spiritual warfare because it is pure. And today is what was called Susan Pure, because when the Jews rose up, when our forefathers rose up in revolt against the Persian Empire at the time, or against various elements in the Persian Empire, um, they, were vic they were victorious on the Dar 14. You know, they conquered their enemies on the Dar 14. And then on the Dar 15, they conquered the walled city of Sushan. So it took one more day for, you know, in order to conquer the fortified city. And as I've been teaching you, the 15th of every month, the full moon, the 15th of every biblical month is the full moon. Mm -hmm. So they were at full power. They had enough power on the 14th to conquer the whole land, to conquer the whole nation. And then on the 15th, they conquered Sushan. So this is called Sushan Pure. You know? And if you want to know more about that, read the book of Esther. It, it has it all in there. Okay? Now, today's Torah portion is oh my god it's it's uh, absolutely interesting you know the last i think two or three shabbats we came on at 2 p.m mountain time 
But I said today, I think we need to come on early because mm -hmm. I've got a lot of material uh, to cover. You know? And I always, as I tell you every week, I wait until um, the night before uh, Shabbat or, you know, that evening mm -hmm. to look at the material because I want the anointing of that particular Shabbat to be fully active as I try to interpret the Torah portion for that particular Shabbat. And man, I, so many things. Uh, I guess I would have to say this is an easy one. Hmm. Okay. It, it, it just came rushing at me. Rushing in. You know, we're in the month of Adar. This is the month that uh, Father Moshe was born. It is the month that he died. It was. It's the month that he erected the Mishkan in the wilderness, the tabernacle in the wilderness, and they consecrated it, uh, some uh, of the sages teach, on Nisan 1, which is the day that we go to war. And Nisan 1, this year, we always have what I call Messianic Revival, the first 12 days of Nisan. We do every day, we come on the air, and we do something um, of a spiritual nature, or I should say spiritual warfare, every day for the first 12 days, because it is a rabbinical belief that the first 12 days of Nisan actually reflect the 12 months of the year. So on Nisan 1, we are, as we do every uh, Rosh Kadesh of every month, we are uh, affecting and influencing the entire month on the first day. We sow that seed is a cosmic opening. Well, on the first day, you know, it's like a dedication. Okay. On the first 12 days of Nisan, each of those 12 days refers to one of the biblical months. And the first day is Nisan, second day is Iyar, the third day is Sivan, and then I believe Tammuz, you know, and on and on and on. So what we do on each day, we're depositing the seed of a blessing, the seed of victory, the seed of warfare into each month on the first 12 days. And by doing that, we get ahead of the devil. Mm -hmm. We get ahead of Hasi Khan. Amen. Three months later, when that day finally occurs on the calendar, we've already been there. We're waiting on the enemy to ambush the enemy. We're waiting on him. Amen. Try something. Okay? That's what happens on the first 12 days of Nisan. And so... We do spiritual warfare every day for 12 straight days. Then on the 15th is, is Passover, is Pesach. We go to war on Nisan 1 because that's the time when all kings go to war. When all, you know, Israel, Israelite and Hebrew kings go to war mm -hmm. on Nisan 1. If you don't go to war, the enemy will go to war on you. Hell yeah. So right now, we're like Russia and, and Ukraine. We're like Russia right now. We're, we're getting ready to go to war on Nissan 1. And this year, Nissan 1 and April 1st correspond. Nissan 1 starts at sundown on April 1st, that evening. So April 1st, just tell yourself, you know, April 1st, get ready. That evening, bam, get ready. Amen. 
So we're gathering our forces right now on the border of the enemy. And we're going to launch a major attack come Nissan 1. And there's nothing he can do about it unless you let him. Unless you let him steal your joy, primarily. Because Adar is supposed to be a month of joy, a month of provision. The way that they, uh, our rabbinical brothers celebrate Purim is by having a masquerade party. And during that party, they get a little tipsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I imagine there are a lot of our rabbinical brothers and cousins today uh, might have a slight headache. I don't know. It uh, depends on how much joy they tried to bring in hmm. yesterday. Hmm. All right? But it's a time for warfare. It's, it's like, you know, uh, Adar 14 and Adar 15 is like um, war games in a way. You know, right now Russia is practicing. You know, they're having war games. They're having military exercises. Mm -hmm. So a dar 14, a dar 15 is similar to that, but on a spiritual nature. You know, as I told you yesterday, hey, naming it, you know, on the 14th and 15th, uh, name it and grab it. Name it and know. claim it, grab name it. Name it and claim it, grab, grab it and grab it. Grab it and grab it. <laughs> you know, make confessions, make decrees, declare this. Meditate on your dreams, goals, blessings, and ambitions. You know, you should have started doing that yesterday. If not, do it now. Start start now. Get in on it today. You know, it's a full moon. All right? And so it, it is definitely not too late to get in on this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure you take advantage of this cosmic opening that we have today. You know, with, with it being the 15th, with it being an appointed time, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. you know, this is an appointed time, a feast day. It's not written about in the Bible, but all of uh, Judaism celebrates these two days, okay? And isn't it interesting? Remember... Adar is a month of preparation, as I said, and also a month of provision. How can you have joy if you're broke? Let's get real. Yeah. Don't give me no spiritual stuff. Don't, you know, you know my joy is in the night, you know. Don't, don't give me that mess. Okay? You need money. Okay? Mm -hmm. They cut your light up. They cut your lights off. Yeah. Your heat all, especially this time of year, uh, you know, let's see how much joy you really going to have. Let's see how much joy your kids are going to have. You might be spiritual, but let's see what your kids are going to say. If you can't cook a meal, you know, because the gas is off, when the light's off, whether you have electric or gas, you don't have money to go to you know, to go to McDonald's or someplace. Let's see how much joy you're going to have. You need money. I'm not overemphasizing it, but you got to have it. You know, let, let's, just be, let's just be real. Let's just be real. Yes, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, when we have to go through it to get to the other side, you know, to get to some prosperity, to get to some blessings. It's the joy of the Lord that carries us through. Yeah. Of course. Amen. Right. But the goal is to get to that cash money. To get to a point where the blessings are coming in. All right? You know, we have to. It's uh, no way to, there's just no way to get around it. Yeah. Okay? And we open today's uh, Torah portion. You saw a sign. Go ahead and put it up there again for him, Leslie. <laughs> Sorry. Just going to swivel that around. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a number that says text to donate. 
Now, these people got in touch with me, I guess, two weeks ago. Leave it there? Yeah, leave, leave it there while, while I'm talking. Text to donate. And as I said, they got in touch with me through email a couple of weeks ago, and then they followed it up with a phone call. Um, and they said, um, we have a tool that we believe can increase the, you know, the amount of your donations. You know, by making it easier for people by giving them a dedicated phone line for your ministry that we will set up and maintain where they can text a donation to you anytime they want to from any place that they may wish to do it at. You know, yeah. riding to work on the subway or on the bus, you know, sitting at home because everybody has that smartphone growing out of their hand today, pretty much at all times. And they can simply text their donation in. If the Holy Spirit hits them, and they feel, you know, I really like Rabbi uh, teaching today, and Sister Leslie's teaching, um, I think I'd like to send them a little something. And basically, I, I, you can make a donation of, of just about any size small or large. And our text to donate number is 833-432-0653. Or you can go to our webpage, ethimhealing.com. Um, did you get a chance to put the link in there yet on the webpage? No. Okay. I have a lot to but edit. If you, have, you have the number. Basically, the link on the webpage is going to be uh, if you're using your computer uh, or even your cell phone uh, to log in or whatever, it, there'll be a link there uh, that you'll be able, you know, like I say the first time, it'll take down your information. Then after that, you just text the number, put in your amount, it, print, it gives you a receipt and everything. And we're a nonprofit, we're a 5013C. They verified that with us. We had to produce all of our documents and um, articles of incorporation as a nonprofit and our tax ID numbers. You know, we had to provide proof of that uh, to them before you, because they, they do this only for nonprofits. And so we had to provide that proof in order to have this dedicated line. And what's so astounding about it, you know, just shows you how God does things. Like I said, he got in touch with me about two weeks ago, and I just kind of looked at it, you know, and they followed up with calls, and I said, hey, I said, yeah, I got your email. I just haven't had time to get to it yet. And then I mentioned it to Leslie, the sister Leslie, and she was like, well, how much is this going to cost, mm -hmm. you know? And I told her how much it, it cost, you know, and I said, it's, it's not much, you know, it's, not going to break the budget or anything. And she was really kind of against it. You know, I, 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 you know you're always doing blah, 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 blah. And, <laughs> you know, I called them and talked to the head guy, talked to the, the young lady that initially got in, talk, in touch with us, and she put on her boss, and he explained it, all the charges, you know. They take a, a, a small percentage out of you know the donations for maintaining the, and providing the service and Leslie was sitting there and she overheard the conversation and she had questions and and I said yeah I said we, I think we should do this so we're getting ready to go online to put everything online we've we've had the software now for about four months that we're paying for and we're not use it and but we make that payment every month and then our web page oh wow they, they charge us an arm and a leg to maintain that web page yeah. every month and we're really not getting the most out of it and then back in september i think it was we bought all of this recording equipment and software licenses in order to have a, a do professional live streaming to where we can 
uh, we'll, you know, like we're now, we're just going to uh, our Facebook page. This is only going to our Facebook page. And when we get through, we upload it to YouTube also. Well, when we use this software, we will not only broadcast to our Facebook page, our Facebook pages, I should say, we will all also be broadcasting directly to YouTube. You can go to you know our web page and you can watch on the platform of our web page there. You can go to our Facebook pages and watch. You can go directly to YouTube and watch whatever platform you're comfortable with. YouTube, Facebook, our web page. I don't know, we might be able to uh, go to TikTok or Instagram or, you know, there's some other platforms out there too that you can watch on. Um, but virtually any social media platform you can go to and watch from, you know, whatever your heart's desire. And we're going to start doing that uh, Nissan 1, April 1st. Yeah. will be our launch. And we're, we're trying to get in touch with a professional sound engineer to come and uh, help us set up all our equipment. Um, he said he was out of town on vacation last week. And he's supposed to be back this week, but we still haven't heard from him. We called a couple of times and left messages, and Sister Leslie texted him. Uh, but he said he's going to be available sometime this week come over and get us started and then we'll practice and have several drive runs of course uh, to make sure that everything is going to go off without a hitch so the fact that we have two of ours this month is really very beneficial to us because it, it gives us a time uh, to get up on the learning curve of our software and our equipment and so we're real excited about that, about the, the Messianic Revival this year. And so I finally pulled the trigger last week, toward the end of last week. And then they, you know, they said, hey, we need this document, we need that document, we need your uh, nonprofit you know, bank account, we need this paperwork on it. And so that took uh, a couple of days to, you know, for us to dig all those all that information up, find it and get it over to them. Then they had to do whatever it is they had to do. And finally, Monday toward, you know, uh, I think toward the end of Monday or I, maybe it was yesterday, I don't know. Um, we finally got it up and running. And here we are today on Shabbat, on Shushan Purim. We have the number you know, we've shown it to you at the beginning, and again, we finally have the number up, 833-432-0653, and we're, you know, launching that number today. And the part that makes it so ah, miraculous is that the Torah portion today is called Tremu. Teruma. 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 And Teruma means offering. It means donation. Now, we didn't plan that. We didn't hold off to have our number where you can text uh, to donate to us today. You know, this is the 19th tour portion of 5782. You know, we, you know, this was not planned. Having the number was not planned to coincide with this tour portion. It just did. It just did. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, it, ain't that something? Okay, that's no coincidence. No coincidence. That's God. Amen. That's God. Teramah is 
Exodus 25, verse 1 to Exodus 27, verse 19. Now, we have a bit of it, an enigma in today's Torah portion. It's the 19th Torah portion. Mm -hmm. All the previous 18 Torah portions, without exception, all 18, as I told you, the rule is that the Torah portion is named after the first verse of that Torah portion. Now, with Terimah, there's a difference. The name doesn't pop up until the second verse, depending on who you follow. Now, I'm going to read. Now, this is this is from a messianic uh, source that I'm reading from. Okay, and this is Exodus 25:1. Okay, it says the Lord said to Moses, "Speak to the people of Israel that they take for me a contribution from every man whose heart moves him. You shall receive the contribution for me." And then in parenthesis, immediately following that verse. It says Exodus 25, verse 1. Okay? Okay. So right, why are we right. in a bit of a quandary? Why do we have an enigma? You found out? Huh? You, you found out why? No, did you? Oh, no, I thought you might have gotten no, the answer. I haven't, I haven't found out why. Okay. Now, of course, we know that when the rabbis originally uh, delineated the Torah portion, and name them. There was no such thing as a chapter. No such thing as a verse. There was no chapter and verse when they originally did this. All right? But through convention, over the years, over the centuries, however long this has been going on, um, we came up with um, chapter and verse. Yeah. When I look at all my other translations, I've looked at manuscripts, uh, boy, you know, uh, all these other translations, whether they're Christian, such as King James, um, What's the other one I, I like to go? King James? King James. New Living? No. no new, new King James? No. New American Standard. New American Standard, okay. Yeah. Which is considered the best Hebrew Bible. I mean, the best English translation. Okay? They all list this Torah portion as verses 1 and 2. Let me read King James. New American Standard is what I'm searching for. In the King James, and it says, verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, That's verse 1. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then verse 2, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man, that giveth it willingly, with his heart, ye shall take my offering. Verse 2. In the verse 2. In the New American Standard, which is uh, said to be uh, the best English translation, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, in the verse 1, verse 2 begins, Tell the sons of Israel to raise a contribution for me. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall raise my contribution. In the verse 2. Now, the word, the Hebrew word there for contribution or offering is terumah or terumah. Terumah or terumah. 
It means offering. It means contribution. It means donation. The name of the Torah portion is Terumah. That's why I'm saying that the fact that we have this number um, become active uh, today is, is from the Lord. Donation. Terumah. Quite, you know, just very, very interesting. I, I'm going to read you um, a couple of other um, translations. This, this is a uh, rabbinical translation, rabbinical Judaism. What the rabbis read, what Rashi and others um, read and commentated on. Here we go. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, and then I have a uh, colon. Then verse 2 begins. Speak to the children of Israel and have them take for me an offering from every person. Okay. Let me get to it. From every person whose heart, whose heart inspires him to generosity. You shall take my offering. End of verse 2. All right. It says so there. Now, let me read to you from a Messianic Bible. The Restoration Scriptures, the True Name Edition, Study Bible. Okay, here, here we go. Uh, Exodus, or Shemo, chapter 25. Verse 1. Okay, I'm almost there. All right, here we go. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, in the verse 1. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> almost every scripture I've read, they don't even number it. Right. It, it doesn't say 1 there. It'll say... Um, no number then, but when verse 2 begins, it is numbered. Oh. Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that gives it willingly with his lev, which is heart, you shall take my offering. Messianic. Okay, Messianic, rabbinical. Now I'm going to read it to you from the Kabbalistic Bible. Okay. Maybe the Kabbalistic Bible might might be different. Okay, <laughs> we won't have this enigma, this quandary. You know what's going on? What, what the what the heck is this? You know. Okay, that's Mr. Team. Okay, here we go. Terima, verse one. The Lord said to Moses, saying, "Come in this one." But then it's that number two pops up. Tell the Israelites to bring me a contribution. You are to take the contribution for me from each man whose heart prompts him to give. Hmm. At least in, in this one, they put a, a, a numeral one for verse one. Okay. And on the other page, they have it in Hebrew. I'd just like to take a moment and scan the Hebrew. Down to verse 3, okay? But they, they even break it up in the Hebrew. When I look at the majority text in the, the interlinear Bible, same thing, verse 1 and verse 2. The only... And, you know, I, I, I look through other commentaries, rabbinical commentaries, and other manuscripts, and, you know, the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Mm -hmm. They all break that up in two verses. And I've been telling you for the past 18 straight weeks that the name is taken 
from verse 1. And that's been true up until today. I'm trying to find out, is there any significant spiritual reason, you know, why that is, is like that? You know, why do we have, you know, this enigma mm -hmm. in Teruma, or Teruma? Why is it broken up? And I have to tell you, I don't have an answer for you <laughs> no. right now. Okay. I've, I've reached, you know, remember I haven't had much time. I didn't, um, didn't notice this until, you know, yesterday evening. And I got, in, you know, uh, sent a message to my old, you know, Kabbalah teacher and, you know, last night to see if, you know, he might know why. And I went on, asked the rabbi at Habad.org. Um, they take their time getting back to you. Uh, yeah. And they might not want to tell me anyway. You know, our rabbinical brothers can sometimes be tight lips. <laughs> about certain things when you ask those questions. Well, even um, Christian, because uh, the man that ordained me, you, you know, I was a, an assistant pastor uh, at that church. I, I, remember, I can't even remember what the scripture was. I asked, what does this scripture mean? And he looked at me, he said, you know, it was, and he even said seven or 10, I can't remember which one. He said it was seven or ten years before I got the answer to that question. And then he just turned and walked away from me. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't tell me. I remember another pastor. Uh, you know, I was on the staff there. And I asked what a certain, he had prophesied over, over me in front of the congregation at church. And I asked him, he used a particular scripture. And I asked, what does that scripture mean? What's the deeper meaning? And he would just, for like two years, he would just say to me, you need to study. You need to study. He wouldn't ask me. Then, after two years of me coming in and asking, he did tell me um, a very basic interpretation. But I didn't get the deep interpretation until after years of study. Everybody, you know, yeah. If somebody, you know, a prophet or evangelist from Israel would come out and ask them, do you know, you know. But it nobody could really, nobody could tell me. No one could tell me. I only got it from studying. Maybe I'm at that point again. Maybe it'll be years before I know and understand why Terumah. the word is in the second verse. But, according to my messianic friends, it is still the first verse. And when I look at it, it should be, you know, all of that should be one verse. Okay? But, we're in the minority mm -hmm. in this one. But I just wanted to let you know that we had that type of controversy going on. We had, you know, Terramaz and Enigmas. It presents a quandary. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled and see if this becomes the norm uh, as we go as we go forward. But okay, all of that mystery aside, Teruma offering, okay, donation, and and what's our theme? about the, the Torah, about the name of the Torah portion, about the first verse. I'm going to continue to say first verse because I, I'm not the only one saying that. I'm in the minority, you know, but I'm not the only one who uh, believes that it, uh, Terumah still occurs in the first verse of this Torah portion. So I'm going to continue to call it the first verse. Okay. Okay. Like I said, I'm in the minority, but uh, I'm not alone. Terumah is the name of this Torah portion. Donation. And let me read it to you again out of the Messianic one, so I don't have to stop. The Lord said to Moses, 
speak to the people of Israel that they take for me a contribution from every man whose heart moves him you shall receive the contribution for me and as I started to say what is our theme our theme is that the first verse of each Torah portion is a revelation on healing that it's true intended purpose this deeper meaning is toward healing and that it is toward the healing of a certain part of the body and that it gives and I also told you that the verse before the first verse you know which is the last verse of you know the previous Torah portion a lot of times will give us a clue and that the verse after verse 2 will also give you a clue as to how to crack the code but in this Reese Torah portion we have the means to crack the code right there mm -hmm. okay? okay right there in the Torah portion the first verse of the Torah portion itself hmm. tells us how to crack the code. Tells us what part of the body that meditating on the Hebrew letters, what part of the body does this Torah portion heal by meditating on the Hebrew? Just looking at the Hebrew letters going across whether you can read Hebrew or understand it or not. What part of the body is healed with terima? The heart. You want to guess? The heart. Okay, why do you say the heart? Because it has something to do with the giving. God, God said something about the heartfelt offering laid on your heart to give. I agree with you one, one million percent. But there are other parts too. Yeah. The head? You know the brain, the head, the mind. The head. So any neurological condition. Okay. Or if you don't have a neurological condition or a heart condition, it'll maintain your neurological health. It will maintain hmm. your cardiovascular health. Okay? Why do you say the head? Mind, heart, connection. Um, That's good. Because all issues So your flow. emotions, your mind. Yes. Okay. And there are all issues of life flow from the heart. Okay, everything flows so. from, from the heart. So, Because, yeah. you know, above all, guard, guard your, heart. your heart. Because out of it flow the issues of life. The issues of life. And in Oriental medicine, the heart plays the note for the entire body, as it said. When you look at, in Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. when you look at the character for heart, it's, it's just like, it's the same principle as Hebrew. Different right. parts have different meaning of the same word. And the character for heart has the character for music or note in it. So the heart plays the music for the entire body, for all the other internal organs of the body. Mm. Yeah. Whatever note your heart is playing will affect your kidneys. Whatever, you know, uh, you know, different notes affect the kidneys for good or bad. Different notes affect the liver for good or bad. Mm -hmm. Different notes affect the lungs for good or bad. The spleen for good or bad. The pancreas for good or bad. That's in Oriental medicine follows right along with scripture. Above all, guard the heart. Yeah. Because out of it flow the issues, issues of life. Yeah. Or I could say all the issues, issues of life pertaining to life. Yeah. Above all, guard it. Make sure you don't, you know, let the wrong thing come into your heart. One of the main reasons why I give to people standing on the street corner sometimes if I have a little change 
It's because I don't want to let my heart get too hard mm. toward these people. Because when, when I was in New York, when I was just, you know, I had, uh, I had just, you know, made the decision to read the Bible, to open up, begin at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, and read it all the way through for myself. I had just um, pretty much completed it, okay, or was in the middle of it. And so New York had oh, such a homeless problem. I wasn't used to that. Mm. But I wasn't used to seeing people living on the street until I went to New York. And I had to see them every day. You got to walk right by them mm-hmm. in Grand Central Station. Mm-hmm. Some of them yelling and screaming. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. That's hard to do. You really have a hard, you have to have a hard heart to walk by somebody filthy, dirty, half naked, some of them. I remember I walked up to one man and I handed him some. He was just yelling, I am hungry. I am hungry. And he had his pants all the way down to his ankles. Oh, really? And I walked up to him, got right in his face. I said, here's some money, brother. Pull up your pants. And I gave him some money and he went like that. So he was on his game. He wasn't totally crazy. He looked like he was crazy. You know, if he was totally crazy, he probably would have knocked me out. Uh, you know, maybe it was the Holy Spirit on me. Mm-hmm. You know, pull up your pants. Okay? He was wearing underwear. His underwear was so dirty, his white briefs were actually grayish black. Mm-hmm. They, were so, they were that dirty. Mm-hmm. And I walked over and I gave him a few dollars. He was hollering. He was hungry. I, he just kept saying in a loud voice, shout, I am hungry. I am hungry. And one day, I was on the train in Grand City, you know, waiting for the train to pull out to go back to Connecticut. And this man um, walked by, and he was selling these papers. And they have, in New York, they have these papers. I'm going to take my time today. Okay. They, they sell, they give the homeless people, people these papers, and they can actually make a little money for themselves selling these papers. Mm-hmm. And he uh, approached me and asked me if I would buy papers. He was homeless. And I said, well, how much is the paper? And he told me how much it was. I think it was 250 or $3. I can't remember how much it was. And I said, I only have a $5 bill. And he said to me, well, the next time I see you, you take this train every day, don't you? Because most people who are on the train take it every, every day. Every day, yeah. At that time. He said, um, he said, next time I see you, I'll give you your change. <laughs> you know? I said, okay. I gave him $5 and I took the paper. And I started reading the paper. Mm-hmm. And in the, this is a paper put out by the homeless for the homeless. In that paper, it said, never give a homeless person money. Never give money to a homeless person. In a, in a publication <laughs> produced by, the by homeless. homeless people or homeless organizations for the benefit for the, the financial benefit of homeless people and I said what mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was like, huh? like, how could, how okay. could they do that and it said hey if they say they're hungry don't believe they just want to use that money to buy drugs and alcohol he said there are uh, soup kitchens and missions all around the five boroughs where they can get a meal, a free meal, where they can get three squares a day. Mm. Never believe a homeless person saying that they're hungry. They, they can always get a meal. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's just not true. It's a fallacy. 
They're just trying to get money to get drugs or alcohol. They said, never believe a homeless person when they say, I just, I'm just trying to get a room for a hotel, uh, a cheap hotel so I can get a shower and a bath. Same thing, they told all the places where they can get a shower. They said, if you see a homeless person and they're dirty, it's because, I learned a new word, it's because they're just indolent. Okay. I had to look up that word. Do you know what the word indolent means? Um. That's how I Sister Legend can spell any word known to me. Right. I, you know, <laughs> I usually am pretty good at knowing the definition. Indolent means they just don't care. They give it. They don't care, yeah. They just don't care. They've lost all hope. Yeah. And they just refuse to watch. Lazy. So They're super them. lazy. Huh? Yeah, that means wanting to avoid activity or exertion. Don't care. They give it Real up. Real lazy. So, you know, it's more than it's more than lazy. It's just slow, lazy. You know, just it, uh, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> okay. And it says, so don't believe, don't believe that they're hungry. Don't believe that they just wanna, you know, get themselves cleaned up. Don't believe that they don't have a place to stay. Hmm. So there's plenty of shelters, you know. You know, a lot of them, you see them when they say, oh, it's too dangerous to stay in the shelter. But they claim that. They say, don't believe any of that. Do not, under any circumstances, give a homeless person money. In the paper. Okay. I still continue to give people. I would always keep 2 to $5 on me every day. To give to homeless people. Remember yourself. To give to people who ask me for money. Even after reading that. And I just said, I'm more concerned with the condition of my heart than I am with the truthfulness of this person mm. and the reality of what they're saying to me. My, my heart condition, my heart remaining soft and pliable to Sense. receive seed and produce, you know, a crop mm -hmm. and bear fruit was more important to me, like I said, than the, their truthfulness. Mm -hmm. So I kept, I kept on doing it. When we uh, opened up our ministry in Shreveport, we were in an area, um, it was an historic area. It, it was a section of town in Shreveport where the prison system would just dump people into that, you know, into that area. There were halfway houses for sex offenders. It was, you know, you could throw a rock in any direction and, and hit a sex offender. Mm -hmm. That's where they put them. You know, all the sex offenders. If there was any type of group home or housing, you know, for rehab, drug rehab, sex offenders, mm -hmm. it was right there in that neighborhood. And we opened up our ministry right there. You know, Yeshua said, you know, the well has no need of a, of a physician. That's right. Yep. You know, we raised our two youngest boys in that ministry home. And people would um, just knock on the door asking for something. We were, when we um, decided to close down and move to Colorado, we were in the final stages of filling out all the paperwork and jumping through all the hoops to become a food bank where we could distribute food where people would come and we would hand out food. And we would do that anyway. You know, people who came to our ministry, you know, we had a commercial kitchen and we had a pantry. We would go in there and get canned goods. We were already receiving uh, donations from the food bank. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just, we weren't official yet, but they, you know, would bag up a truck and 
just unload on us. But we were already getting um, large contributions from the centralized food bank uh, there in Shreveport. And we would hand that out. Basically, I would hand it out to people who would come to our church services. You know, mm-hmm. here, take this, take that. And we were also, we were, uh, they were making, we were going to put like a kiosk in the front yard where people can just come and help themselves to canned goods, toiletries, uh, feminine, feminine products, Mm -hmm. women, diapers, you know, just be out there and they could come by and just help themselves whatever they want any, any time, day or night. Uh, we were getting ready to do that. Um, this particular uh, brother, he had a radio show, a Christian radio show in Shreveport. And he invited me on, you know, on his radio show. And what, what, is, what is that? Our water cooler? <laughs> Making it's a cool? refrigerator, actually. Oh, a refrigerator. Cooler. It's this doesn't have water. Okay, but anyway, um, when the people would come, you know, to our ministry, they would complain about the shelter. Oh, the shelter, you know, they just try to take your money. If you get a check, they want you to sign the check over to them. You know, they're just trying to get money out of you. And, you know, they had all these negative stories about the shelter. And off air, you know, me and this particular brother, you know, he was also an ordained minister. He told me, Vince, he said, don't fall for any of that. Hmm. The reason why they don't want to come to the shelter is because they, they can't do their drinking and drugging at the shelter. They can't keep drinking and drugging. They would rather sleep in the street, they mm-hmm. give up drinking that and drugging. That's I said, a, really? That's what they want their faith to be? You know? That's serious bondage. And he, uh, what did you say? Well, that's serious bondage. Yeah. To think that way. And we, we witnessed it firsthand one day. He said, the reason why we have them sign over their money to us, one, they're staying there. Mm-hmm. And if they're getting the check, they, they should, you know, they, they say they never turn anyone away from the shelter. They, they never say no. They never close their doors. But if you're staying there and you're getting the check, you should t- turn that over to the shelter because we're going to feed you, clothe you, clothe you if we need to. Mm-hmm. So you should give it to us. Right. But... And, and and the other thing that they don't want to do when they go to the show, they say, say Vince, we get them up every morning, like at 5 a.m., and we start working. Hmm. We put them to work in, in, you know, in the kitchen. We put them to work here. We put them to work there. You cannot stay in this shelter and not work. Yeah. You know, what did Paul say? You know, if you don't work, you don't eat. So you cannot be in that shelter and not work. And if you're getting some type of uh, governmental assistance, you sign it over to them. Okay? To help pay for your room and board. And he said, the reason why we do that, the reason why we work them from sunup to sundown is that we hope a light bulb, a light will go off in their head and say, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I'm working from sunup to sundown. Exactly. Maybe I should just go get a job. <laughs> you think the light would come on? You know, maybe I should just go get a job. Yeah. At least I could keep my money and I can get, kind of get up when I want to get up. Yeah. I can eat what I want to eat. Hmm. Okay, and do what I want to do when I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I want to stay out late, I can stay out late because 
when you're in the shelter, you got to be in by a certain time. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got to be in by a certain time. You got to get up at a certain time. You got to be in by a certain time. You're going to work from sun up, you know, from sun up to sundown or what have you. They said, we hope, Vince, we're hoping that a light bulb will go off. And then we're hoping that putting them through a little bit of austerity in terms of work, which is a part of life, okay? Right. You know, you know, it, you know some austerity is a part of life. And so we're hoping that being so regimented and austere with them, that a light bulb will go off in their head and they say, you know, I can, I can do this and get a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I can pay rent. I can have my own home. You know, I can be somebody, you know. Uh, that's what he hoped. And so it's, you know, we would, you know, pass by up under the freeway, you know, there. The favorite hangout of homeless people is up under the freeway. And they have their signs, okay, up and everything, just like they do in Denver. Um, so, with knowing these facts and being on the front line of, you know, the homeless crisis in our country a little bit for a short period of time, I still, I don't want to have a hard heart. Right. You know, Sister Leslie will come home and say, I gave $20 to somebody today. You know, to a woman she had a three. This is one lady, she had her spot all picked out. And she goes to the same spot every day in the parking lot of this uh, particular strip mall. Okay? She has her two or three little kids out there with her. And she's got her sign up begging for money. She has little tables and chairs for her kids. She has their playthings, their toys on her spot. And the little kids are sitting there drawing and playing just like they're in, at home. And Sister Leslie gives them money and I tend to give uh, women like that money too. You know, but I said to myself, oh my God, what is she teaching her kids? What lesson are they learning with her sitting out there? Got, got, the, their, got their, their furniture. Obviously, she has to have a car. Yeah. You know, teaching them to sit there and beg for money like that. What lessons are they learning? And I keep, we haven't done it yet, but we said we're going to print out some pamphlets yeah. of where people can go to get help, where they can go get this free help. All that information on the flyer. You know, all the information there. No need for you to stand out here on the corner with a sign. And we said we, we're going to stop Unless, you know, we really feel moved by the Holy Spirit to do so, we're going to stop giving money to these people and give them this flyer where they can go get food, they can get clothing, they can get shelter, they can get help with utilities. If they're still in a house, if they're unemployed, they, you know, they, they can get all these social services rather than staying out here. We have we keep telling ourselves we're gonna do we haven't done it. And believe me here in the Denver area, almost every single corner that you stop at a red light is gonna have a homeless person with a sign. Every time you turn a corner, every time you might see five, ten, fifteen 20 tents. People living on the sidewalk. Got, the, got their tents. You can't walk on the sidewalk. Downtown. It might be from on a block. It could be from one 
corner to the end. You know, the neighbors complain because they're so they're so filthy. It, it's nothing but trash. You know, it'd be something if they would get some garbage bags and put the trash in it and, and throw it in some of the dumpsters that are around. They won't do it. Every now the city will come and just sweep them off the sidewalk. Make them pick up their tents so they can just clean up the filth. You know? Um, but you shouldn't give them money. According to that newspaper I got from that homeless guy, and even my friend who runs the shelter in Shreveport. And by the way, I don't know how many weeks went by before I saw that guy again, and he was selling the newspapers. And I said, hey, remember me? I said, you got my change? And he started going in his pocket to give me his change. And I said, never mind, that's okay. Okay, I just want to see if you keep your word. You know, and he said, thank you. And he went on selling his papers. So he did. And it wasn't the next day, and it wasn't the day after that. I can't, I don't, I can't remember how many days or, or week, weeks before I saw him again, but I eventually did see him again. And he was prepared to give me my change hmm. or whatever. You know, and, and I'm telling you these stories because the Torah portion is called teruma, teruma, donation, offering. And we're talking about how to get healed. Remember our thing. Always remember that the theme is how does meditating on the Hebrew in the first verse of every Torah portion every week, how does that heal you? And you heard Sister Leslie say, I think this Torah portion heals your heart. If you have any cardiovascular disease, this is the Torah portion that you meditate on for healing of your heart. If you want to maintain good cardiovascular health, this is the Torah portion. Mm -hmm. And then she also said head for neurological conditions. And I remember asking her, then I jumped in and chased my rabbit. Um, why do you say head? And you said, oh, and you did answer. You said, well, you know, the connection between the heart and the head, the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, that's true. Is there any other reason why you say the head? We discussed it about the issues of life. You said that, flowing mm -hmm. from the heart. Um, you said the neurological in, in connection neuro with mind. Anything with neurology. Yeah, anything, anything with neurological. The head. Anything with the brain. You said emotions. Um, okay. That's, that's good. Okay, so, well, okay. Well, one clue is, it says, the Lord said. Now, this is God speaking. Okay. The Lord said to Moses. So, in order to carry out this mitzvah, mm -hmm. what did Moses, what did Father Moshe have to have? Ears to hear. He had to, he had to be able to hear. Mm hmm so this is a Torah portion talking about the healing of your hearing. Okay. Your ears. What are your ears connected to? You mean your head? In oriental, no, in oriental medicine. Oh, your kidneys. Your kidneys. So your bones. Bones, yes. Bone health, bone structure. Okay. And so it said, the Lord said to Moses, what did he say to tell Moses to do? To pick up an offering. Hmm? To give an no, offering. You skip, you're skipping. The Lord spake to Moses. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord tell Moses to, to do? To speak to the children of Israel. Speak, speak to the again. people. Mm -hmm. Speak. So you have to speak. You have to have the ability to speak. In Oriental medicine, what is the tongue connected to? The heart. The heart. Mm -hmm. You remember. Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Our professors would be so happy. Uh, you know, when easy. we want to 
see the condition of your heart, we begin every examination in Oriental medicine by having you stick out your tongue. And we look at your tongue and we can, you know, like, look at my tongue if you can see it. Mm -hmm. No one did. <laughs> I have a crack down the center of my, that's, we call that a heart crack. Means there's a heart condition. If the tip of your tongue is very red, that's heart fire. All right? And, you know, we can look at other areas of the tongue for other internal organs and their condition. Do I still have a, a coat on mine? Yeah, you do. That's bad. That means I have phlegm. I have, that's not, that's not a good condition. I have phlegm. So we look at that, but mainly, you know, we're looking at the heart and some other internal organs on different spots of the tongue in Oriental Medicine. And you'd be surprised. You've never done it. Start, everybody you meet for a week or even a day, ask them if you can see their tongue. And you will see, you'll be surprised. You'll see 10 different tongues. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody had the same tongue. You know, <laughs> I, um, you, you know, we look at the shape. We look at the texture. We look at the color. Is there a coat on it? Is it spotty? You'll be surprised. You'll see spottiness. You'll see cracks. Okay? You'll see spottiness. You'll see... And where do you see those spots in teeth different marks. places? It indicates that that internal organ is not healthy. <laughs> You'll see teeth marks, so you drink your water, so you don't see teeth marks. Teeth marks? In your tongue. You know, we can tell that there's a neurological condition. Mm -hmm. The teeth marks mean that there's a neurological, we call that internal wind. There's, you know, you know, people who have ticks, you know, they're going to have, you know. No, the teeth marks, is, this means you're, you're, you're dehydrated, really. You just, no. Nah. You're dry. Yeah, the, the internal, the trembling, the quivering The quivering is wind. Is wind. Internal I think it, it, it has something to do with the shape and the teeth marks too. Well, it could be some of that too, but it's not necessarily the thing. It's okay. the quivering, the shaking, a quivering tongue means you have internal wind, which is neurological. Mm -hmm. You have a neurological something with your nerves. So he said, speak. So this is referring, you know, the hearing of the ears, which means that in order to have good hearing, you have to have good kidneys. If you have good kidneys, you're going to have strong bones. Your legs, your hips, your joints, movement. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the seven candles, again, you're hearing. Okay? The tongue. So, meditating on this scripture will produce heart health, it will help your hearing. It will help your speech, which is heart. Okay? Primarily heart. Mm -hmm. You see two themes here. Speech and the heart, because the tongue, you know, if you hold up the, your tongue, you look up under your tongue, it's a root. In Oriental medicine, medicine, we say the root of the tongue is in the heart. heart. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? Out of the it's abundance of, of the, the heart, heart the mouth, the mouth speaks. Speaking. Yes. The Bible coincides with Oriental medicine so many times. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's just ridiculous. So, neurological condition, anything dealing with the head, anything dealing with the seven candles, you know, the menorah of the face, two ears, two two eyes, four, two nostrils, six, one opening for the mouth, seven. Mm -hmm. The menorah of the head, the menorah of the face. So again, this is the second or third week in a row that neurological health is implied. We're on a theme here, okay? This is at least the second or the third, um, I believe it's the third, um, tour, second or the third tour portion dealing with 
neurology, neurological health. Mm. And now we're moving into the heart, the heart. Okay. Now we have neurological conditions. We have hearing, which means we have the kidneys. We have the tongue, which means heart. It, you know, and the Lord said, anyone who has a willing heart, whose heart, whose heart moves them to generosity, or has a willing heart, okay? What else is implied? I've already gone over it in a way, but what else is implied? Mm -hmm. Your hands, your arms, okay, and your legs. Well, everything. Do you then. know why? Um, no. What parts of your body must you use in order to give? You just use your hands. The hands. When I gave that money to the guy standing in the, in you know in Grand C Central Station, yelling and screaming, "I am hungry." What did I have to do in order to give him the money? If you have legs, you can walk over to him, but you could be in a wheelchair. Okay. And you get I had to use my legs. Mm -hmm. I had to walk over to him. I had to hand it to him. Yeah. So in order to give, first, you have to have a heart. When I saw him and the way he looked, I was moved in my heart. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. and they can say that's you know what that's really your mind, you know, rather. Right okay, all right. No, it's your heart. I mean, people like I'm just saying heart. some people might, and you know, people like you, say, <laughs> people like you, you know, that, that's the mind that's or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You moved in your heart, and then you have okay. the right thought. So, you know, I had you know, I had to be moved in my heart to have the thought, the head, mm -hmm. neurology. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I had to walk over to him. Mm-hmm. And give it. Mm-hmm. What does the scripture say? To speak to the children of Israel, have them take for me an offering from every person whose heart inspires him to generosity. You shall take my offering. One of the other scriptures says, bring me an offering. Do you want me to find it? Um, bring me an offering. It says, I, take... Let me, let, me, let me find the, the, one of the other translations. Let me see which one of them. They'll say, take from me a contribution from every man whose heart moves him. You shall receive a contribution from me. So that they take. Okay, not there. I'm trying to find. It's going to take me just a quick minute. I remember the pages. Yep. And I do that all the time. 404. Let me go to 404. Says the fourth. What's what to say? Speak to the children of Israel and have them. It says take from me an offering from them. It says take on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember the page number here. Oh, okay. Well, well, I got it anyway. I turn to it. Let's see. In the Kabbalist of the we did it say bring. Um, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring. Mm -hmm. There it is. The Lord said to Moses, saying, tell the Israelites to bring me a contribution. Yes. To bring something, you got to walk. Right. If I you get said, it. If you told me, you said, you know, you, you brought me a glass of water. You have to be walked into the kitchen, to our water cooler, got it. You brought it, use your legs, your knees, your ankles, your hips, to walk over here. Then you had to hand you handed it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Bring. Yeah. Okay. So to carry out this missile, you need legs. You need arms and hands. 
So meditating on this scripture in Hebrew, the first verse of this Torah portion, or the first two, okay, if you like, in Hebrew, will heal everything that is mentioned. You have to hear, you have to speak, you have to bring, you have to have the heart. Do you follow me? Oh yeah, I gotcha, it's easy. Okay. Yeah, I got it. All right. Med that's what meditating on this scripture heals. Now, I've got a ton of books here, a ton of Bible, literally a stack of Bibles. What did the Lord tell them to bring? An offering. An offering. A terumah. Specifically from every person whose heart inspires whose them. Whose heart inspires them. A terumah. An offering. A contribution. A donation. Put it on, just turn it and put it over there again. <laughs> I right, just turn the whole thing. Don't turn oh it. Oh my God! around with that handle. Just turn the tripod. Can they see it? Yeah. What does it say? It says text to Terima. Okay. Text to Terima. Why don't you grab that and write? I didn't think write Terima on top of donate or put donate slash Terima. Okay. I'm gonna wait for Sister Leslie to do it. She just gonna reach over there and grab it, and she gonna say, "You want to uh, put slash terra text to donate slash terra mom." Gonna give you a, a Hebrew lesson here. Wherever you want to put it, on top slash don't okay. Draw a little arrow going from Terama to, okay, all right, okay, all right. I want, I, I want you to see that. See, because I know how the brain works. See, now you see it. There is actually a chemical reaction going on in your brain, a biochemical reaction to store this memory in your brain, since you saw it now. It, it, it's, it becomes a neural pathway with axions, dendrites, and synaptic recesses. And it is stored, leave, leave this, not, not that, no. Okay. And it's, and, it, and it's actually stored, not necessarily in the brain, but in some internal organ. In other words, when your brain recalls the memory of seeing this, it might go to your liver to pull up that memory. It might go to your stomach. It might go to your kidneys. Or it might go to another part of your body. Something in your joints, some muscles. Your memories and your experiences are stored in your internal organs. <laughs> it might be in your heart. Because remember, we take the Torama from those men who have a heart. It, you know, maybe that's the clue. Maybe it, it will actually, actually biochemically come from your heart. Quite possibly. That's why I wanted you to see it. I wanted to say these words. Like I said, I'm going to take my time to this. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay? Text to Terima. 833-432-0653. Text to Terima. Text to Dobie. Okay, you can put it back on me. Now, here is something else in this first verse. You have to do something. You can meditate on this scripture. 
okay, for your heart health, for your neurological health, for all the things that we have spoken of. But you have to do something also. What must you do? Work. <laughs> no. To receive that work, to receive the blessing, what must you do? And from the scripture, other mm -hmm. than what we've already, other than what we've already spelled out in every part of the body. No, I, I didn't say what else is healed. I said what must you do? What must you do to receive the healing? Give. If you're giving, okay. In particular, tithe. You must. Teruma. You must teruma. Mm -hmm. You must tear them up. You know, or as the prophet Frankie Ajaya used to say, Frankie Ajaya was a, a comedian, uh, a black comedian uh, in the uh, mid, uh, mid to late 70s. And we used to sit around and listen to his album. And he talked about when he went to college, how he failed his biology test. And one of the questions on the biology test was, what is a protozoa? And he wrote, his answer was, a protozoa is a professional tozoa. <laughs> one who, <laughs> one who tozoas for money. Oh one who God. tozoas for money. A, that's a protozoa, a, a professional pro tozoa. tozoa. <laughs> one who tozoas for money. And he said, the, prof the professor wrote back F. <laughs> So in That's order to funny. receive the healing that is promised here in uh, Exodus 25, verse 1, you must terumah. Okay. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. You must terumah. You must bring an offering. You must give an offering that comes from your heart. You know, what did Yeshua say? God, you know, the Bible said God loves the cheerful giver. Oh, yeah. Not someone who gives grudgingly. That's right. That's right. You know, God loves the cheerful giver. Somebody who gives from the heart. I give to these people on the street. I know they're drug addicts. I know, you know, they're indolent and shiftless and, and what have you. But I still give because I'm concerned about my heart. And my heart health. You must give from your heart. It has to be heartfelt. If it isn't, you're wasting your time. Yeah, that's right. You really are. Yeah. You're wasting your time. Your tithes, your offerings, your gifts, you're wasting your time if it's not coming from your heart. If it is, you know, hey, write him a check. I got plenty of money here. Move along. Move along, peasant. Out of my way. Yeah. It has to be heartfelt. When you give from your heart, it is a rabbinical teaching. When rabbinical Jews are sick, they, you know, in their synagogues they have what they call the pull box, and you, you put coins in it or, uh, you know, or, or money in it or what have you. And they do that when they're sick. They get, in order to be healed, they give to the poor. Mm -hmm. They're taught this. They're brought up thinking this. If I am sick, I need to give. I need to perform the mitzvah of giving in order to obtain my healing. Right here mm -hmm. in Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. And they teach from that, the giving. And I, I'm going to prove it to you scripturally. That's why I have all these, these books here. I'm reading now from uh, the Kabbalistic Rosh Hashanah. Um, 
prayer book. On Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. these are the prayers, the prayer book, the Siddur that we use. And uh, on page 23, you know, if you want to spend the money and, and buy this as I have, the Kabbalistic Rosh Hashanah prayer book. Okay? You can get this from the Kabbalah Center in um, Los Angeles. I believe it's just Kabbalah.com. Let me read it to you. Now, this is something. Mm -hmm. Do you have your Krav Maga shirt, t shirt handy? Yeah, I'm going to go get it. Ready, go get it. I'm going to wait on you real quick. I, I'm going to read something. I, I want to show you something. Or you can grab mine. It should be my 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 uh, t shirt should be hanging in the closet. Bring both if you can put your hands on them real quick. If you can't, you know, just bring yours or just come on back. I don't want to take a whole lot of time on this. Most of you have heard of the martial art of Israel, Krav Maga, and. I am a martial arts master. I've been studying the martial arts ever since I was nine to ten years old. And I teach Krav Maga. Uh, check and see if this is in frame. And if, it is. If, you know, if it's not blurry, you know, just check and if, everything. And sometimes, I, you know, I just wear my t-shirt. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Yeah, Krav, nice and easy. Krav Maga, and it's a martial art that specializes in gun, knife disarms, stick disarms, uh, self-defense moves. You don't do sparring in Krav Maga. You don't line up and, you know, okay, let me see if I can hit you first and hit you harder, okay? It's not like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You get on the mat. See if you can submit the guy, choke him out, choke him out, mm -hmm. put him in an arm bar. You know, it's not like kickboxing or, you know, Muay Thai, uh, you know, kicking and punching. Basically, you're going to drill, you just drill on self-defense moves. A lot of gun design, you know, because they, they have that problem mm -hmm. in the Middle East. A lot of gun designs, a lot of knife design, a lot of stick design. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is my t-shirt, my Krav Maga t-shirt, and this is Leslie's Krav Maga t-shirt. Okay, can they see that well enough? Yes. Okay. You can bring it closer if you want for the face. His face is on there. Okay, the face of the founder yes. is on there, but that's the founder of that's Krav not that's neither here nor there. Okay, I thought you were going to mention him. Okay. Emi Lichtenfeld. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I um, brought, when I read this uh, next passage to you out of the Rosh Hashanah uh, prayer schedule, we went, for Valentine's Day, we went out to dinner on Monday. And Leslie had, you know, she just had that T-shirt on. We had been inspecting properties uh, during the day, and she just happened to have it on. And I went to the bathroom, and the guy was showing Leslie uh, to our table, the waiter, and he, he saw the T-shirt. And he says, I want to take Karl Maga. There used to be a Karl Maga uh, training hall or facility around the corner from me, but when the pandemic hit, they closed down and they haven't reopened. And so Leslie told me, so, oh, well, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. my husband teaches Krav Maga. And so when I came out the bathroom and I'm coming to the table, he you know, stops me and starts talking to me and says, you teach Krav Maga? I said, I'm, you know, I'm not teaching formally right now, but yes, I'm, I'm a Krav Maga instructor. I'm a grand master of martial arts. I teach a variety of of different martial arts that I've been trained in. And he said, wow, I want to take Krav Maga. I said, oh, okay, well, sorry. You know, <laughs> I'm not, um, I don't have any plans to open up the studio at, you know, at this time yeah. or anything. 
you know, so Krav Maga. Now, now let me read this to you. Okay? And it's the first paragraph of page 23. It says, the word kar korbanat, korbanat, means sacrifices. Korbanat. The word korbanat means sacrifices. Korbanat comes from the Hebrew word krav. Mm. K-R-O-V. You saw yeah. krav and then maga on our t-shirt. The word krav means war. Mm. Hear me, people. Write this right down. down. Yeah. Korbanat means sacrifices. The word korbanat comes from the Hebrew word krav. Remember I told you how the character for harp in Chinese has the character for music inside of it? Yep. And, you know, Hebrew words have the same principle? We get the word korbanat, sacrifices, from the Hebrew word krav, which means war. Korbanat also comes from the Hebrew word karuv, meaning to bring close. Maga means close. So krav maga means hand-to-hand -hand combat or close combat. That's what the word, the phrase, or the art, Krav Maga means. It means hand-to-hand -hand combat. Close combat. Mm. All right? Okay. Kiru, meaning to bring close. Through the, here we go. Through the sacrifices, through Terumah, through the sacrifices, through the Terumah. Mm-hmm. We go to war against the Satan. Oh. Wow. You're like, wow. Glory to God. Okay? Mm. Through Terimah, through the sacrifices, we go to war against Satan. And we bring ourselves closer to the upper worlds or into the presence. Oh, yeah. Through the sacrifices, through the terumah, we go to war against the Satan, and we bring ourselves closer to the upper worlds. Korbanat is referring to the sacrifices that occurred during the age of the Holy Temple. Hmm. Okay? The first verse of this Torah portion God, this is the first time God is telling them about what sacrifices to bring. It has to be from your heart. You have to bring it. Then the next verse, verses uh, 3, talks about what those are. Mm -hmm. The gold, the silver, the things that they need to build the temple, to build the Mishkan, you know, in the wilderness. They were to bring this to follow Moshe, and basically the Bible says that he constructed the temple single-handedly. The workmen made the various things mm -hmm. that went in the temple, but it was Father Moshe who erected it, put it together. Oh, wow. I think During he had the month of Adar. What did I tell you the month of Adar meant? Your deliverance is forming. Okay. Father Moshe, Moses, formed the temple during the month of Hadar. And on Nisan 1, they dedicated it with a sacrifice, mm -hmm. a sacrifice of incense. He dedicated, the first thing, he didn't pray. He didn't do an animal sacrifice. 
The first thing he did when the temple was erected was the incense, the sacrifice of the holy incense. Mm -hmm. They called it an atonement for the temple. That was the first thing that he did on Nissan 1. He went on Nissan 1, he went to war mm. with the sacrifices that the people had given for the temple. the temple. They went in to hand to hand combat mm -hmm. with the devil, with Hasatan, with the enemy, with yeah. Beelzebub, yeah. the Lord of the Flies. This altar is for going into combat that. with the enemy, hand to hand, tooth and nail. Real. Yes, yes, yes. This is what this scripture is about. How to engage in spiritual hand to hand warfare. You have to build the temple. You have to bring a Tarumah. Yes. I want to read some, something to you here. I think I marked it. This is called, it's a Kabbalistic text called Apples from the Orchard. Apparently I didn't. Let me hmm. find the Torah portion for today. It's gonna take me a, a second here. While I find it, put the camera back on <laughs> on that right now. All right. Now I know there's some of you out there who can say, oh, he's trying to manipulate us into an offer. Hmm, okay. After all I've just read to you, you think that's all I'm trying to do? Trying to get you healed. Now I found this thing so easy last night. Mm. And it's hiding. Here we go. Okay, we're getting there. I found Bashalak. I'm headed in the right track. There's it, bro. Okay. Mishpatim. Okay, Teruma. Teruma. I want to read you. This is by. Uh, a Kabbalistic master called the, the Ari. And most people who practice Kabbalah today follow his teachings. And it says, Teremah says, donations. Mm -hmm. Speak to the Israelites that they take for me a donation. Ah! Mm. This is kind of good. <laughs> Because this calls, no, that's not verse, it's not calling that verse one. That's a, uh, a footnote mark, okay. I was thinking it was agreeing oh. with me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now here's, here's, here, here's what, what did that, what I just read to you, what did it say? It says, by your donation, by your corving up, by your sacrifice. It says it draws you closer to the upper the world, world. To the Lord, Shekinah. Okay, what has to happen to draw you closer to the upper worlds? What am I doing? You're lifting. I'm You're lifting? What's another word lifting. for lifting? Giving, praise, giving. Giving praise, what's another? Elevating. Elevating, okay. I'm okay. Like, <laughs> I don't know where you're at. The word teramah, which is usually understood and used to mean donation, literally means elevation. Mm -hmm. I've even said, uh, saw where uh, someone said it also means separation. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. By donating something to the holy temple or to some other holy use, one is elevating it from the domain of the mundane to that of the sacred. Or, as the other reading says, you're elevating yourself from the mundane to that to that of the sacred. It is not surprising, therefore, that the concept of donating and the word teruma is partic uh, in particular are subject to the detailed analysis in the classic Torah commentators in general and in the corpus of Jewish mystical writings in particular. What follows is one of the several analyses that Arozel offers of this concept. And it, it really just gets so deep from here. Uh, let me go back to your elevated. Parashat Terima begins with a discussion of the various items the Jewish people are asked to donate to the construction of the tabernacle or the Mishkan the portable temple that accompanied them throughout their trek from Mount Sinai into the promised Holy Land of Israel. Although God asked the Jews to make this donation and specified exactly what was needed, it was left up to each individual if he would donate and how much and what he would donate from each person whose heart moves him. Thus, this donation was an expression of each individual's feelings about the relationship, about his relationship with God. As such, the concept of donating, as described in the opening of this parashah, is a deep spiritual experience, which strikes at the most profound levels of the heart of both the individual Jew and the collective Jewish community. Wow. Wow. Boy, and, and if I went into this teaching, you know, about donating and what you're doing uh, with this donation, which, you know, Parts of the tetragrammaton and are being, uh, you know, that's the Yo Hey are being activated. Which letters, you know, just one head, and I'm going to read it to you. The vowel between the two nuns signifies their intent, which extends from one world to the other. Um, the divine blessing that comes to the world is always associated with the number 100, as in the verse, and Isaac planted in that land and produced or yielded a hundredfold. You know, just talking about, you know, a hundredfold, you know, from your seed, your seed of giving. Ah, boy, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, we, we can stay on this one yeah. part, <laughs> okay? But the evolution of the temple, of the temple, you know, all of the, um, the complete description of the temple is contained in the uh, Torah portion, Terumah. The complete description. We don't we don't go to any other Torah portion to get a, a description, a fuller description of the temple. Of the temple, the complete description of the temple is contained in the uh, Torah portion, Terumah. Yeah, it was something I wanted to read where it says, you know, each, let me see if I can find out. I saw it when I was skimming through this. Bring a that existed, I couldn't understand the idea of donation. Bring the concept. Bring a state of feminine female and understanding. Bring a word because to me, she does it. Each shape of sin, the miracle day. I'll just have, have to tell it to you. Um, but it, it talks about how here the next let me see next frequent news, tell the creative tension between 
it ta- it, he talks about mm-hmm. how or in one of the one of the things I read that today each individual is responsible for creating a spiritual temple within themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's jump to New Testament. We're mm-hmm. in the temple. We're in the temple yeah. of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Ruach of Kadesh. Yeah. Okay, so we're responsible day in and day out for recreating the temple. Everything that we read about in this Torah portion, in the entire Torah portion, is telling us how to reconstruct a spiritual temple within ourselves. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. Okay? Yes. So that we and and we do that by terumah. And we elevate ourselves. We elevate ourselves. We separate ourselves. We go hand to hand combat with the enemy. You know, what does that mean? What does the enemy in the New Testament the Bible says? Satan comes but to kill, steal, 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 kill, and destroy. And destroy. Yeah, steal, kill, and destroy. I said steal first. Steal, kill, and destroy. Kill, steal, and destroy. Whatever. How did he do it? Through sickness and disease. I can't kill you. Destroy your health. Destroy your health. Destroy your body. Destroy your temple. Get you to use drugs. Destroy the temple. Yeah. Get you to become an alcoholic. Get a young woman to sell her body. Get it so run down from selling it to, you know, 10, 20 men a night. Just destroy it. Still kill and destroy. Steal your joy. You work hard all your life. You build a nice home from you and your family. Satan comes in and gets your daughter, you know, hooked on drugs. Steal your joy. Gets your son thrown in prison. Steal your joy. Steal, kill, and destroy. When you give, when you tear them off, You say, not, uh uh-uh, no devil, Mm -hmm. Uh uh-uh, not here, not here, not here, no. Get back, get back. Not today, devil, not today. (laughs) Get back from my health. Amen. Get back from my children. Get back from my ministry. Get back from my community. Get back from my nation and my country. Get back from my people and my race. Mm-hmm. Get back. No. Terima. Not only heals you, but heals the land. Heals everything. Terima. Oh, you know, I told you, you know, um, about a Facebook page that I haven't Oh boy, I haven't posted anything on it in months. But it's called the 613 Commandments. And I it's a desire I have to go through all 613 commandments and determine which commandment affects which part of the body. I told you about the story of this particular rabbi in England. Whenever he was sick, he would go to the doctor. He would let them examine him. He would let them run tests. He would let them do x-rays, MRIs, or whatever, blood work, and wait for the diagnosis. And once he received the diagnosis, once he found out which one of his internal organs was causing the problem, or, you know, if it was multiple organs, 
He would say, okay, thank you very much. He would not accept any treatment. But he would go back and spiritually discern which one of the 613 commandments corresponds to that particular part of the body or internal organ. And he would double up. Mm -hmm. He would double up on it. On that particular mystery. Mm -hmm. He would also, as rabbinical teaching instructs, he would double up on his terumah as well. Because, yeah. I'm just letting you know it's, it's okay, okay right now, but it's two hours. Okay. He would double up on his terumah. He would double up on that particular mystery. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a teaching. There is actually a book called the Sefer, Sefer Haredim or Haridium. <laughs> no, Sefer Haredim. Not Haridium. <laughs> what? Haredim. Can, every, every which way I pronounced it to Jewish speaking people or those who, who grew up in the tradition and they still act like they can't understand what I'm talking about. The Sefer is a book, S-E-F-E-R. Mm -hmm. Haridium or Charedim, C-H-A-R-E-D-I-M. Now that's how you spell it. Yeah, Haredim. Haredim, that's how I say it. But when I say Haredim to a, uh, well, you know. It's a, it's a gutter roll, so Haredim. Okay. Sefer <laughs> Haredim. So on page 511, mm -hmm. in a book by Rabbi Not Rabbi Nachman of Breslin called The Anatomy of the Soul. Page 511. The Sefer Haredim is, uh, talks about this relationship between the human body and all of its bones, muscles, and sinews and internal organs to the 613 mitzvah. Each part of your body, each internal organ is connected to a particular mitzvah. One of the 613. There are 248 positive commandments or mitzvahs and 365 negative. And I started that Facebook page, the 613, because I wanted to enlist the help of the saints and their, ima their holy imaginations in which particular part of the body do you believe this particular mitzvah corresponds to? And we want to catalog it catalog, put it together in a book, and whenever you're sick, you know, we'll have the mitzvah that you have to perform if you're having issues with your lungs, the mitzvah that you have to perform if it's with your knee, um, your heart, your elbow, your feet, which one? Mm -hmm. And the Sefer Charedim talks about, it doesn't list them out. But let me read you a little bit about what it does. It, it may say um, the heart. The heart is the seat of the emotions, passion and thoughts, as we have seen in our text, talking about this book. It is therefore obvious that certain mitzvah listed here can be applied to the mind as well as to the heart. Mm -hmm. That connection that Sister Lindsay talking about. And now it talks about positive. It says faith. To believe in God. Then another one's to recite the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Fear of God. To maintain constantly an attitude and, and respect and fear and awe of God. To pray. Love of God. The next one. Rejoicing on the festivals. And when performed. Rejoicing on the festivals and when performing all the mitzvah to sanctify God's name, repentance, 
Okay? Mm -hmm. now, that's just a few. It gives you a couple of clues. The eyes, okay? To look at the tzitzi, to read Torah, okay, from text, to cry over the loss of a worthy person, to bemoan the loss of the temple, okay, the ears, to evolve oneself in Torah study, to hear the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, to hear the Megillah on Purim, the Megillah on Purim, to listen to the, the Sadiqim, the righteous, and to the righteous judges. You're doing that now, mm -hmm. okay? okay. <laughs> the mouth, to speak respectful, to speak respectfully at all times to parents, grandparents, teachers, yep. and all others whom respect is due. Amen. To recite the blessings, the prayers, the cadence for the new season. Verbal confession of one's sins before God. Studying Torah and teaching Torah to others. That's what I'm doing. Teaching you Torah. The mouth, eating. To eat on Shabbat. You're supposed to eat three, you know, scrumptious meals on Shabbat. Okay, well, let's get okay. going then. On Rosh Kiddush, another food. <laughs> gotta eat. To eat only kosher food. The hands. Any mitzvah that can be performed by the use of the hands. Okay? The legs. Any missile, they can be performed by the use of the legs. So when we go through those 613, we ask ourselves, what part of our body do we use to perform this missile? And that's, you know, the part of the body that gets healed from performing it. Like I said, this is called the anatomy of the soul. I'm going to very quickly just read you some of the, it has nine parts. I'm not gonna read you the hay on every chapter. I'm just gonna read some of the parts that it covers. Part four, the central nervous system. Part five, the circulatory system. Part six, the respiratory system. Mm. Part seven, the peripheral nervous system. Part eight, the skeletal, skeletal, skeletal oh, and muscular system. Part one, the soul of the anatomy. That topic right alone tells you something. Part three, the digestive system. Part two, body and soul. Part nine, the reproductive system. The spiritual attributes of the entire anatomy. Okay? Okay. You can understand. And here's one. And I usually go to these um, as a reference, primarily. Something will be referenced in, uh, in something I'm reading or studying. And so I'll go, you know, I got these books that, in order to go there. Um, but I was reading this this morning, and I went, oh, my God. This is, I'm going to read to you the back cover of a book called Body, Mind, and Soul, Kabbalah and Human Physiology, Disease, and Healing by Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg. Now this is a famous uh, rabbi, a famous uh, Hasidic rabbi. He's a mathematician. He has his PhD in mathematics. And this is on the back cover. You know, this is about healing. And I went, oh, Lord. No wonder I'm sick. <laughs> okay. Let's hear it. Okay. The phenomenon of disease is one of separation or estrangement from God. Hmm. Estrange, estrange, you know, when you're estranged from someone, you're separated from. Estrangement reflects a blemish state of the Sephirah of Ha. The Sephirah that correlates with the body's immune system and which represents the soul's power to acknowledge that which is true and good and to express thanks to others for their kind gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to not say nothing to nobody. <laughs> yeah. 
Sister Leslie said, I'll be on the phone talking with people. And Sister Leslie will be wishing her to say thank you. Say thank you. <laughs> you say thank you. Glad you hear me. <laughs> I didn't know you heard and I me. Say, I won't say it. I, I guess I am. <laughs> and she told me, ask how they're doing. Ask how they're doing. <laughs> That's how they do. And just this a little nag. No, it's not Same a little thing. nag. It's That's just how they do. a little That's heart, they do. heart expression. I'm expressing for you because I know. And, and she said, I just started kind of doing it lately. I just know you, you need that impetus to go ahead and okay. follow through. If you don't express gratitude and appreciation to other people, you're going to be sick. You're violating. Um, a spiritual concept of one of the ten, ten C for all of God. I was like, oh Lord. Hmm. Okay. Now here's another one. A blemished attribute of heart, insensitivity to others, and inability to perceive and acknowledge the truth in the words of others, and to th and to thank them for their <laughs> acts of, of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know that I up the window. Like John Paul Jackson saying, you know, that's not hard to do. <laughs> take me now, Lord. It is, it is just take me now, you know. Ooh, I, man, you're talking about falling under conviction? Oh, I'm so glad. Reading this? Well, thank God for like, that oh, conviction. My goodness. Yay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> the truth and words of others and to thank them for their acts of goodness results in confusion. This is the inability to distinguish between ally and foe. Mm. Mm. So I grew up in Detroit, Chicago. Everybody was like your enemy. You felt, you know, felt growing up. You felt like everybody was out to get Everybody you. was foe. And they weren't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for Barry. You know, so now, Except for Barry. <laughs> You had what did B.B. King say? Thank God for Barry. So. What did B.B. King say? What did the prophet B.B. King say? <laughs> Stop. Nobody Stop. loves me but my mother. <laughs> and she could be jiving too. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's sad. Whoa. That's, sad. That's very sad. Okay. Sad. <laughs> What's oh, right? dear. The inability to distinguish between ally and foe, or between self and non-self, Confusion leads to spiritual blindness, total insensitivity to others. Now, we call that a heart wall. Your heart is hard. Mm. Remember I said the reason why I give to those people is because I'm trying not to be insensitive to it. I know they're lying. I know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm making an effort not to be insensitive to it. As much as I can. Okay. This is a jewel. Yeah, this is. A I was jewel. watching the news uh, once, just a couple of years ago, and this church was telling people to come to church and to take money out of the uh, the offering basket if they need anything. Just take money out. Whatever they need, just take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that they were for a period of time. They were going to give to uh, people who came to church anything that was given to them in an offer. Apostle Chuck Pierce, from time to time, uh, in his church, he'll tell people to come up. If you need a little something, just take it out of the basket. <laughs> he would say, just leave the checks alone. <laughs> okay? Any cash, take it. Mm. Whatever you, you know, if you need a little something, take it. Okay? Just leave, just leave us the checks, okay? Mm -hmm. And they asked that one pastor, he said, don't you think people will take advantage of you by having such a generous, wide open offer with no strings attached and no qualifications? And he, and he said, oh yes, that's what I'm hoping for. What a statement. Hmm. I'm hoping people will come and take advantage of us. Hmm. Wow, okay. Right. That's somebody living by this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
A blemished attribute of Hod thus brings a person to total estrangement from the benevolent and the benevolency of others and from God. In particular, disease is the estrangement of the sefer rope of the left axis of the tree of life. This can be understood as follows. The blood carries the cells of the immune system that fight off disease. The blood relates to the sephora of Bina, understanding. Bina means understanding. Mm -hmm. the, blood the blood vessels to the sephora. Let me say that. Yeah, the blood vessels to the sephora Gura, might, and the immune system to the sephora of Hod, thanksgiving. These are the three sephora located on the left axis of the tree of the tree of life. Mm -hmm. When the sephora of sephora, excuse me, when the sephora of the left become estranged from Hesed, wow. which means loving kindness, mm -hmm. and is and its companion sephora on the left, on the right, excuse me, then disease is manifest through the malfunction of the immune system. Wow. The estrangement is expressed in the book of Psalms. It is my infirmity that the right hand of the Most High has changed. Wow. That's the, the changing of the right hand of the Most High refers in Kabbalah to the concealment of the divine principle of right due to the estrangement of the left from the right. Exile is the concealment of the right, the concealment of God's loving kindness from the souls of his people. He says Israel, but that's any Christian. The state is here referred to as infirmity or sickness. Taken from chapter 5, understanding illness. Wow. Just on the back cover. That's a breakthrough. That's beautiful. Okay. Now, and this is by Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg. The other one was by a teaching from Rabbi Nachman of Breslau. Mm -hmm. I call myself a Breslau, right? Uh, I love reading the teachings, you know, of Rabbi Nachman of Breslau. You know, he's the one who coined the phrase the manure of the face. That's where I got that from. Right, okay. Okay. Here's another one I like reading, Torah, Torah Light and Healing by Rabbi Mat Matnyahu Glazerah. You'll see a lot of books from him. Show that one again. It was kind okay. of brief. Real Torah quick. Light and Healing. Right. Okay. Mystical Insights into Healing based on the Hebrew language. Matanyahu Glazer. He writes a lot of, a lot. Okay. And the other one, Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg. Right, right. You'll see a lot of books by these gentlemen. And remember, we want to build the temple, mm -hmm. right? Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg, Living in Divine Space, Kabbalah Meditation, by Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg. He's the one right. who wrote the body, mind, and soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, nice. we build the temple through meditation. You know, I, I'm building the temple. I'm getting up every morning and I'll meditate and I'll say, Lord, can you can you zoom in on the TC, 10 C for all? Not with, really. With it, I can't zoom in. I don't have the tool pulled okay. up. Well, but I can um, post up. post uh, on my phone. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. We're going to post the, the 10 C for row. You're going to take the picture? Yeah. Ours. You're going to use R. Right. So that's just going to, and when you pull this up, it's going to have, make sure you get it all in. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like you're cutting off male hood. Okay. All right. 
Sister, you know, just like Sister Leslie, every poor portion posts uh, the first verse in Hebrew. This time when you post it, you're going to have to post the first two verses. I thought okay. you were going to post it, you know. You're going to try a little bit. Oh, I was going to show it to him. Yeah, if it's okay. can. But post it also. Attach it to uh, this Torah portion like you do with the Hebrew letters. Okay. When we get set up with our new equipment and software, we'll be able to just put that right on the screen for you. But I come out in the morning and I say, Lord, allow the Sephiroth of Hesed to be on my right hand side as a wall. The Sephiroth of loving kindness. Allow the attributes of the planet Jupiter to be on my right hand side as a part of that wall. Jupiter is called the mercy planet. It shields the earth from taking asteroids mm. from outer space that could destroy us. Yeah. So allow the loving kindness of the Sephiroth of Hesed to be on my right hand side. Allow the attributes of protection and healing of the planet Jupiter to be on my right hand side. Allow the attributes of Father Abraham to be on my right hand side whom the word says was full of loving kindness. Lord, the right hand side refers to the south, the direction of the south. Lord, allow the attributes of the Sephirah of Gumarah to be on my left hand side. Your power, your might, your fear and awe of your power and might. Allow a wall of that along with the attributes of Father Isaac and the warlike qualities of the planet Mars to be on my left hand side. Let that be a wall on my left hand side. So, you know, which is to the north. Remember, judgment comes out of the north. Okay? So now I've got the wall on my right, I've got the wall on my left, let a wall of beauty as of the you know of Jacob how beautiful is Jacob the Bible says to be a wall in front of me and the rays of the, of the sun to be in front of me and the beauty of the sun Lord, allow the victory of the Sephiroth of the Sock to be overhead. Your victory and endurance and the attributes of the planet Mercury. The endurance, you know, Mercury is always shown as winged feet, endurance. Mm -hmm. The Sock means victory and endurance. And the attributes of Father Moshe, a war, you know, a war leader, the victory to be overhead. Allow the floor underneath me, Lord, to exhibit the attributes of Ha and Father Aaron and the planet Venus, beauty and splendor of the planet Venus to be under me. Then allow me to go in to the, the center spot of Mal Hood, which represents the moon and Father David because he spoke, you know, he wrote the Psalms, he sang the Psalms. That's how you can conduct, construct, I should say, divine space. And I go through this every morning and I meditate on those attributes, the attributes of each of the six uh, patriarchs, actually seven, okay? Those attributes and the planets associated with those attributes. I meditate on them. And imagine 
as you go through your day saying, I'm protected. Love and mercy on my right, power and might, judgment on my left, beauty before me, God's victory over me, sincerity and beauty up under me. Sincerity, remember? Yeah. The importance of sincerity of the heart. You know, that's the divine cube. That's living in divine space. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And then once I go in, I construct a divine person. Lord, I'm inside my divine cube. Put on my head the helmet of salvation. Put on my torso the breastplate of righteousness. Put in my right hand the shield of faith. Put in my left hand the sword of the Holy Spirit. Whoa. Amen. Okay. In my left. So I construct the divine person. Let my loins be girded about with truth. On your side, my, you know, my sexual organs, the Sephirah of your side, for the patriarch of Joseph and Father Adam. Joseph correlates with our reproductive organs because he sanctified his reproductive organs by not sleeping with uh, Potiphar's wife. And Adam, we all descend from the loins of Adam. So I sanctify my reproductive organs and I put on the belt of truth which covers them and goes around and covers my kidneys. It's a belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also... Which is a, the Sephirah of uh, Nesach and Ha and corresponds to my kidneys. Yeah, as in Chinese medicine, there's a belt. The uh, Okay. Then I have my okay. feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace on my feet. So I've got divine feet and legs. You know, in divine space in, in, Gibbs, in Gibbsburg's analogy of things, he correlates, let me see, He says, Hesed, which is on the right, has the inner light of love, or Ahava. Gura on the left has the inner light of fear, or um, Biyaiba in Hebrew. Tiferet has the inner light of mercy, which is Rakama, Rakami. And Nesak, or victory, has the inner light of Bidachon. Bidachon, trust. And the Sephirah of Had, thanksgiving or splendor, which is the in, in Hebrew is Timimba. Huh. Timimba, or, the, or sincerity. And Yasad, which has the inner light of Emet, or truth. Remember, that's our rear God. Mm -hmm. Truth. Okay? And re remember, the right is the south, the left is the north, the front is the east, the rising sun, and the rear is the moon in terms of direction. And the sock is above and high in terms of direction is beneath six, a divine cube, six sides six sides of the divine cube. And, you know, I, I told you about the, the armor of God, how we develop the divine. Once we construct the divine space and go in to occupy, we make the divine person. 
the divine person is made by using the armor of God and also the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me pull that up for you. Give me a moment here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians, uh, chapter 12 verses 12 and 27 or just say first corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 27. hakma hakma is the sephirah on the right hand side mm -hmm. word of wisdom corresponds to hakma a word of wisdom then we have da'a which is the word of knowledge in that picture of the ten sephirah the sister Leslie took for you. And then we had Bina on the left side, which is discernment or understanding. Then we have faith, corresponds to the Sephirah of Tiferet. Then we have gifts of healing, the gift of healing, Hesed, on the right, mercy. Then we have the gifts of miracles and power, Guvara, the Sephirah Guvara on the left. And we have the gift of tongues in Netzach, Nesach. And the gift of interpretation of tongues, Had. All right? On the left. And then Yesod refers to the gift of prophecy or truth. Because remember, Yesod is emet or truth. Mm -hmm. When you combine interpretation of tongues with the gift of tongues, you get prophecy or truth. And it, re it refers to the kidneys. And then there, you know, so we construct the divine person using the gifts of the spirit. Hatma wisdom, the right brain. Bina understanding, the, you know, the left brain, and the keter is the skull. Your kidneys refer to nasak and ha. The right kidney is nasak. The left kidney is uh, ha. And then your sexual organs is, you know, your sa. Your chest or torso and your heart is tiferet. Your right arm is Hesed. Your left arm is Gumara. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're making the divine person here. And then Malhut is your legs and your feet. Now, going back to, to Rabbi, Gins, Rabbi Ginsburg, He has a slightly different take of what parts of the body. But they, you know, they match up. Hmm. He will call, just give me a moment here. So, you know, when you construct the divine space, always construct the divine person, which is you. You need to play this over over and over again and write this stuff down. Hmm. Okay. Rabbi Ginsburg calls Nesek, Nesak, the right leg. He calls Hod, the left leg. All right, victory and thanksgiving. He calls the chest or the torso Tiferet. 
He calls the right arm Hesed, as mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. He calls the left arm Gubara, just like we do. He calls the sexual organs uh, Yasad, just as we do. And he calls the mouth Malchut, the kingdom. Mm. Right. So when you are doing this, when you're constructing the divine you, you use the nine gifts of the spirit. You also use the armor of God, as I described yep. to you. Um, there is some other scripture where the fruits of the spirit are in Zerna and Pen and Yassah. But they, they don't, um, well, they do. Let me, I'll give them to you. Love, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness. And I prefer the Aramaic translation. Instead of long suffering, we say an enduring spirit. Mm -hmm. Love corresponds with his joy, nasat. The joy of the victory. Okay? Ha is um, gentleness, Father Aaron. Okay? Goodness is Gumara. All of his judgments are good. Okay? Mm. And faith is Tiferet. And an enduring spirit is manhood. Enduring spirit. This man, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Is there any pen? You know, Hesed, love, you know, love, joy, the sack, Yasad is um, love, joy, oh, peace. That's what I skipped. You, what, you know, when you look at the structure. Everything comes together in your side before it comes into the earth realm. So it's peace. Remember, shalom means wholeness. Everything coming together mm -hmm. to go into the earth realm of manhood. And God's word brings peace. So you got hesed, love, nesat, joy, Yasad, peace or shalom, Baalhut is an enduring spirit. Because when where do you need an enduring spirit? A long suffering in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Then you got Hod for gentleness. You got Guru's goodness. And then you have faith, which is a central thing of Tiferet. Amen. The fruits of the spirit. Amen. Um pull up um Galatians 5.22. Read Galatians 5.22. Okay. Some of the fruits of the Spirit, I know I only listed seven, you yep. said there are nine. Fruits. Some of them are kind of doubled up. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or enduring spirit, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, Temperance. Meekness and temperance are two repeats of hard gentleness. You know, if you're gentle, you're meek. What was the other one? Temperance. Temperance is patience. If, you know, a gentle, meek person is, um, you know, temperate, patient. So there are really, you know, only seven uh, fruits of the Spirit. Two of them are really meet, uh, repeats of gentleness. Gentleness, meekness, and temperance. Mm -hmm. That's all the same. Probably the reason why it's like that is a margin note drifted into the text mm -hmm. uh, or whatever but even if it did if that's not it that's what it is so those that's what you you know how you construct divine space or when I say 
the temple, I'm actually talking about the sukkah. Hmm. Okay. And when you're in there, you envision the light. You want to take a picture of... Well, they see it. It's in there. Okay. You want to feel and see the light of the presence of God coming, you know, the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of the cloud by day. Mm -hmm. Remember, you know, during that 40-year period, there were no sick and infirm among them when they left Egypt. And neither did their foot swell nor their sandal wear out because they were in constantly in the presence of God by day and by night. Mm -hmm. So when you, divine, when you construct a divine space, you see yourself sitting in a divine presence like your forefathers did in the wilderness, in the Mishkan, in the wilderness. That divine light coming down. Yeah. And I'm, I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you with this. Okay. Each one of the ten sefirot has its own light, its own color. After you conduct or construct the divine space and create the um, the divine person you need to know the colors for instance keter, keter is blinding invisible light you know you've been in a dark theater or in the sitting in the dark room a completely dark room and bam that light gets you mm -hmm. it's blind it has no color Hakma is blue like sky blue okay. but it's also all it can be all the colors you're gonna make me make another one of those okay you know when sister leslie one day she just decided to to do that oh, i knew anything about the color we both we both didn't know anything about the colors so we have different colors up there all right, so don't let that worry you though. Know. Okay, Hakma is blue. Bina is yellow and green. It's green with a yellow rim around it. Hesed is white and silver. You know, it's silver and it has a white rim around it. Gubara is red and gold. It's red with a gold rim around it. Okay? Tiferet is violet and yellow or purple and yellow. Purple with a yellow rim around it. Mesak is light pink. Okay, that's your right kidney. Mm -hmm. Hard is dark pink or hot pink. Yasad is orange. And Malhut is midnight blue or black. When you're meditating on your divine space and a different Sephiroth, imagine these different lights permeating your body. Say you are meditating in particular on the, you know, on healing. So you want to see silver with white light around you maybe illuminating your whole body or even your right hand okay now each sephirot also has a name of god malhut for the kingdom has what lord adonai mm -hmm. yasad which supplies malhood. Everything meets up in Yasad, Yasad, and then goes into Malhut, El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. It can also be El K, light. But I particularly refer El Shaddai, the supply, the nourisher. 
Elohim Tizlaot is hard. Anything on the left is going to have the name Elohim in it. Oh. Elohim usually refers to God's judgment of some kind. God is getting ready to let loose on something or someone when you see Elohim. So Elohim Tizvaot is Ha. Yahweh Tizvaot is Nasak. When you see God's mercy and grace, it's usually, usually going to have the name Yahweh in it. So, and it's going to be on the right-hand side. So Yahweh Tizvaot, God of the hosts of the armies of Israel, you see how that matches up with Nasak and victory and Mose? Yep. Yep. Yahweh Tizraot is um, the name used for Nasak. Elohim Tizraot, huh? Because Father Aaron was praying. You know, judgment was going forth from his prayers, praises, and supplications. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then. We have Yahweh, uh, I'll say for Tiferet, we have just Yahweh, because all of the names come out of Yahweh. Remember, Tiferet is the center, it's the sun. So we have just Yahweh in the center there. Then we have Gubarah, Elohim, judgment, pure judgment, the power and the might of God, miracle. Elohim. Remember Elohim On is the left. judgment. Then we have Hesed. Hesed is El. Just El. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we have Bina, which is on the left. So it's going to have Yahweh Elohim. Because it's judgment. Bina is the Holy Spirit. Okay? okay. Then Hakma. Remember, Hakma is what? Yeshua. Yep. Yah. Yeah. Yah. And then we have Keter, the head, which is Aya. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. So Aya, you can look at Exodus 3.14, Yah, Exodus 15.2, Yahweh Elohim, Fabina, uh, Genesis 2.4, El, or Hesed, uh, for Hesed, Genesis 21 and 33, Elohim for Gura, um, Deuteronomy 1, 17, and Genesis 1, 4. Yahweh for Tiferet, Genesis 2, 4. Yahweh Tizro for Nessa, Psalms 46 and 12. Elohim Tizro for Hod, Psalms 90, verse 8. Okay. And Psalm 94, uh, verse 9. Okay. El Shaddai or El K, El Shaddai, Genesis 28, verse 3, and Genesis 17, verse 1. Adonai from Al Hood, Genesis 15 and 2. And of course, you know, we, the fruit of the Spirit and the armor of God. Let me turn to that. Just give that if you want to look that up. Oh boy, okay. Of course, it's hiding from me. Okay. Galatians 5.22 for the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. And uh, the gifts of the Spirit. I already told you this 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through uh, 27. Let's see. What, what is this? Galatians, what is it? Galatians 5. For the, um, the armor? Um, well, for the army, Ephesians 6. The armor of God? Mm hmm. Ephesians. Mm hmm. Chapter 6. Isn't it? Yes, Ephesians okay. 6. As well as the four mm -hmm. uh, the, the four worlds and the four levels of darkness. But we, we don't um, I think it's Ephesians 6 11 for the armor. Mm -hmm. Also Romans 13 12. Col uh, not Colossians, but 
Yeah, Colossians uh, 3.10, 1 Corinthians 15.49, for the armor of God. Mm -hmm. So you, when you're creating your divine space, once you create your divine space, then you want to create your divine person. You know, when you get so in your meditation that you can see those colors, I almost forget those colors. I told you I was going to take my time. Yeah. I kind of. I'm worried about how it's going to save. Okay. But. I want you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4. The colors. Okay. Verse 4. Mm hmm. Is it. Start reading from Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Okay. Start reading nice and loud. Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, or Chebar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. A, a great whirlwind came out of the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. A great cloud. A great cloud. And a fire enfolding itself. Okay. Is that verse eight? Uh, this is verse four. That's verse four. It's still verse four. Like I said, he saw a cloud like a mist and a fire or a glow enfolding on Except, itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? He saw colors. The colors of the 10 seed for rope. Remember, this is a vision of God. If you go to Revelation chapter 4, we have the seven spirits of God. And we have the rainbow around the throne. Seven colors. Mm -hmm. If Yeshua has seven spirits, then we have seven spirits. It's talking about the seven auras. Okay? The seven auras. Seven colors. If you've ever had aura photography performed on your image, the colors you just don't get, you know, like you see a rainbow. You don't get static colors. You don't get red, yellow, green, blue. In, in layer after layer. You get a cloud. It, it, you know, Sister Leslie and I self, ourselves, we, ha we have a, a friend who does aura imaging. She can read your auras. She can tell what's going on with you and your health from your auras. And the camera will take a picture and will also show you your auras in real time, like a movie. And it's like a cloud covering you. It's like a cloud. And the colors enfold on one another. Meaning, say blue will come out, and then it will unfold back, and then red or green or yellow, you know, will come to the forefront, you know, go to the side, and they're in constant movement. Mm -hmm. enfolding on one another as Ezekiel is describing here. Remember, you know, uh, as you read down through Ezekiel, through this first chapter, it describes the four living creatures. Head of a man, head of an eagle, head of a, uh, a ox, head of a, you know, um, a lion. All of, you know, you know, and you go to Revelation chapter 4, the four living creatures are there. So all those colors that you see in Revelation chapter 4 described are present in Ezekiel's image. So when you meditate on these colors, you know, and you move from Sephirah to Sephirah, and you see these colors unfolding. Maybe you focus 
on the one that you're in have a particular affinity to that day or mm -hmm. you have a need because you need healing or you need a miracle so you're focusing on Guru Ra or you need a word of wisdom so you see your right brain or um, Hakma light up or you need a word of knowledge or understanding it, you know you see these different parts of the brain light up with this. Maybe that particular C for all lights up your entire body. You know, you see yourself lighting up the room with one of those colors. Or you see them enfolding. You know, you play with this in your own imagination. Just, you know, let the Holy Spirit guide you or you know, just let it just, just let it flow. You're becoming the divine person. You're placing yourself in the throne room to be healed and to receive. And then you have the name of God associated with each one. So if you need something from a particular Sephiro, invoke the name of God over that Sephiro. You need a victory over something. Yeah, you know, God of the armies of the host of Israel. Yahweh Tisra over. You need a healing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Invoke the name of, over over Hesed. Need a word of knowledge. Invoke the name of God over that. You know, th these are, are meditations. These are, are ways to construct, you know, the divine temple and a divine person. You know, the helmet of salvation over your head, covering the right brain and the left brain. And, you know, the breastplate of righteousness over Tiferet. And, you, you play with all these. Do what I've done in my notes. Go over this part of the teaching. Write them down. Get them succinct. Practice them. Yeah. You know, just read from them. And then get to the point where you commit them to memory, the colors, the names, the attributes, the planets, the gifts of the Spirit, the, the fruit of the Spirit, all of that the armor over the body parts. Mm -hmm. Then, once you get all of that constructed, once you've meditated on that for a while, do your spiritual warfare. Make your confessions, your decrees. Declare this to be. Declare that to be. I decree. Bind the loose spiritual warfare. You know, go back and watch the series that I did for Sukkot, for the seven days. And I broke all these down. I don't think I, I gave you the colors or the names of God then, but everything else I believe I gave you. And you'll see how to do it day by day. Add layer to layer on it. Watch those seven teachings from the seven days of tabernacles and sukkah. Build that temple and give. And give. That's right, Teruma. You know, go to, what was it, 2 Samuel 28, 4? I don't know. Um, uh, you pulled it up for me last night. Uh, pull up oh, 2 oh, Samuel, Samuel, yeah, yeah. 28, I think it was verse 4. Second Samuel this 24 about, something because it's no, no 24 8 yeah okay this about this is about the threshing floor King David and the threshing floor um okay that's not the verse just um we'll look it up again because it's the not the threshing floor it's not second Samuel 24 second Samuel 28 then 
No, there's no Second Samuel 28. The there highest. No, so that's why I was like. Was it First Samuel? I thought it was Second Samuel. The Second Samuel, but there's only 24 chapters. Okay. And I'm trying to see which one was the threshing, was floor. The threshing floor. I know I got to go. Or not. O R N A N. Or not threshing floor. Maybe you use your phone. You found it pretty easy using your phone last night. I'm born in numbers. It was First Chronicles twenty one twenty two. Or now it's threshing floor? Yeah. No, you said second Samuel. I'm almost sure. Read it. Go ahead and read it. Maybe it's in both. Chronicles 21-22 Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it for me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give ye the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, and I give it all. And King David said to Orn and Nay, but I will verily buy I, it for full price. I don't know but if I'm they, a, can you, you're not, you're holding down on what they hear. I, I clear, think they can. Loud and clear. You want me to read the whole thing? Uh, or you but can that's read. it. No, it, it's. Um, it was First Chronicles 21 22. Let me read it off your, off your phone. You know, we're getting something mixed up and trying to clarify when you're learning what was Samuel. Where's that from? I could have sworn you. I, then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said to, unto David, Take it to thee. And let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give you, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offering, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. Mm -hmm. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offering, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. The other scripture was Second Samuel, Second Samuel twenty four eighteen twenty five, okay. where it says, "On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arona, 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 the Jebusite." Mm -hmm. I remember this now. So David went up as the Lord had commanded through Gad. When Aruna looked and saw the king and his officials coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. And Aruna said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? To buy you the fleshing floor, David uh, answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people may be stopped. So you keep going. Arona said to David, Let my lord the king take whatever he wishes and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and here are threshing sledges for the ox and the ox yokes for the wood. Your majesty, Aruna, gives all this to the king. Aruna said, also said to him, May the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to Arona, No, I insist on paying you for it, for I for uh, it says, I'm paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Okay, stop there. No, keep going, keep going. I, I'll, I'll just refer to it. Okay, so David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord and there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered his prayer in behalf of the land and the plague on Israel was stopped. Okay. I wanted to read that scripture to you. What was David doing? Building an altar. He was building an altar. He was building a tabernacle mm -hmm. to offer up sacrifices. 
and he needed the threshing floor of Orna. Arnon, or I don't know, Arn, Arn. O R N A N. Okay, Arnon on here and on. Ar okay, <laughs> that's different. Yeah? Okay, spell a little different. All right, so oh, yeah. and here's what he said. Here's where you need to take note. He was building a tabernacle, which we are supposed to do, especially this month. He was building a place to offer up an offering to God. He was building a place to do terimah. Mm -hmm. He was building a place to do terimah because it was his fault that the plague was on Israel in the first place. Yeah. Okay? And he was building a place that he could do terimah. And when he had completed his terimah, what happened? The, the play plague was stopped. Mm -hmm. The way collectively, if we were, if we would do terimah, if you do terimah to this ministry, it will protect you from plagues. Mm -hmm. According to scripture. Remember I told you. Rabbinical teachings. Tells our rabbinical brothers and cousins and sisters. That if you want to be healed. Do tear them up. You might get, you might get COVID. But your symptoms will be mild. You won't have to go to the hospital. Or you'll be you know. Asymptomatic, symptom free. Do tear them up. What did David say? I will not Take. make an offering to the Lord that costs me nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. It has to be a. I can't go to war against Han Satan or the spirit of death without a sacrifice, without a korbanat, right? Without a tear them up, without krav. My God, without close combat. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can do the combat, I have to do the Korbanat and the Teramah. It has to be a sacrifice. The only way I can elevate us okay. out of this plague is Teramah. Mm -hmm. The only way I can separate us from this plague is Teramah. Remember, Teramah is elevation and separation. It's offering and Donation. Very good. Okay. And the only way it has to cost me something, it has to be sacrificial. That's right. Then I can get healed. Then I can heal the nation. When you do Teramah to this ministry, you're authorizing me as King David on your behalf to pray for your deliverance and your healing. Mm -hmm. Me and Sister Leslie. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I could walk away from this entire ministry and make two, three hundred grand a year till Yeshua comes. I don't. Mm -hmm. This ministry is much harder than my job than my profession, than my business. Hmm. I don't need to manipulate anybody for money. I don't need, don't mm -hmm. need it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, I wanted to read so you can see that scripture. We'll go to Second Samuel. What, what was the verse? Yeah, Second Samuel twenty-four, verse eighteen to twenty-five. Okay, and Chronicles. What? And and first hmm, Chronicles. What was it? Twenty-one, twenty-four. Is that right? Chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-four. I'm making sure it starts off where it says. It starts off at um. Yeah. 
First Chronicles chapter twenty one. This is First Chronicles chapter twenty one. Twenty one. It started at verse twenty, I guess, mm -hmm. or who knows. Read those entire chapters. Yep. Now I want you to go to um, Isaiah fifty eight, and I believe I will end here. I hope so. Nope. I, I have one more thing to show you. Oh no. But um, uh, it is <laughs> quick. Okay. So Isaiah fifty eight. I told you it was going to be. I'm going to take my time. I really want you to get this. I'm not going to leave you with, it, with any excuse. What, what verse? 58. I think it's verse. No, start reading from verse 1. Isaiah 58. You're talking about the fasting? The type, type of fast? Yeah, the Lord? Start, start, start reading verse 1. And cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day that of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Read that part again. Is it not to deal thy bread? Mm -hmm. to the hungry, and that you know, bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. Okay. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. It says thy re reward. Okay. Re reward. And now, now it goes on. Here's the point. When you give to the poor, mm -hmm. when you deal out your bread sacrificially to the poor, when you bring them into your house, mm -hmm. when you give to those homeless people out there on the street, when you do tear them out, mm -hmm. what does it say happens? Your, your health, health will shall spring, spring forth speedily. Healing. Yes. Healing. The light shall break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily. And you will say, and the Lord will, you will call. Did you read that mm -hmm. part? And the Lord you will, will answer. And the Lord will say, here am I. Yep. And answer. That's what Exodus 25, verse 1 is all about. That's what the entire Torah portion of Teramah is about you really need to get this. You really need to put this in your spirit, man. You really need to do Teramah. And if you think you're being manipulated to give, then you really got a problem. You really do. Mm -hmm. Your heart is hardened. Yeah. You don't have it. You don't have it. So I'm going to close. Well, uh, not with that. I got one more thing. I, I brought out a number of books. Um, <sighs> Sister Leslie and I are going to be attending a conference uh, at the beginning of March on vibrational astrology. It's a conference on healing. Uh, this is one of the reasons why last week we're going to start taking applications. Uh, anybody who really wants to be in it uh, can be in it. It's not going to be some type of rigorous selection process, but you do need to 
uh, formally let us know that you want to be in here, we do have to collect data on you for this. We're looking at markers in someone's astrology charts that indicate certain types of diseases and also indicate what holistic and spiritual practices will heal that person of that particular disease, whether it's emotional or whether it's physical or spiritual. We um, lately, you know, the Lord has uh, put us in touch with a Dr. Will Morris, Dr. William Morris, PhD, Cycles in Medical Astrology. And we will be formally studying with him uh, come this April, April 14th. He is a, a you know, he has his, his doctorate of Oriental Medicine, which is what we're pursuing. And he uses vibrational astrology and other forms of astrology, and, and especially um, vibrational healing the crystal singing bowls, gongs, and tuning forks to heal people. And we're going to be studying with him and his methods using um, Oriental medicine and acupuncture and vibrational healing with uh, tuning forks and crystal singing bowls and gongs and that sort of thing. And we're going to go into this conference on that. Um, very interesting, very interesting how the heavenly bodies can correspond to parts of your body. And when we see certain planets in alignment or out of, out of alignment or congested, we can Note that in people who have different particular types of disease. Now you might say, well, where is that in the Bible? You know, uh, as some Christians have thought. I just went over it when I did the 10 C for Rope with you and showed you how the 10 C for Rope corresponds to various parts of your body and also corresponds to various planets. Now we're going to explore scientific evidence that explain certain emotional states as well as physical disease. Hmm. Pulling all this in together. So I will end there and say, Shabbat Shalom, continue to meditate on your goals, blessings, and dreams, you know, today, because it, it, it has a great benefit. This is Sushan Pure. It's the 15th of the biblical month. This is the day that healing and victory comes forth because it's Shabbat and also because it's Sushan Pure as well. So we got a lot of things going for you today. Take advantage of today. That's why I took my time to really delineate the various forms of healing. Okay? Amen? Amen. Shabbat Shalom. May the blessings of our risen Savior be upon you. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Show them... Text to Terima. Text to donate. Amen. 833 Just put in the um, dollar amount, whether it's 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. Whatever. And amount. it will have you enroll. Once you enter that amount in the text, and once you enroll, you won't have to enroll anymore. It's only a one time enrollment, and you'll be good for. 
donating with us for us uh, in the future without having to enroll again. To Ramah. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.